praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And to bring us the word of God today, I have the pleasure of introducing Pastor Bade Olotu as he brings us the word of God today. It will be the first time Pastor is ministering to us, I think, in about six months. The last time Pastor ministered, I think it was six months ago. So, so it's been a while. It's been a while. And we, we never take these opportunities for granted. And we are so grateful to God for the vessel that he's prepared you to be, sir. And that... Um, at every time that you serve through the means of the word of God, that it blesses us immensely. And we are grateful for this opportunity. And so, brothers and sisters, with Jesus' joy, please, can you join me? And let's make work welcome our dear pastor, Pastor Bade Olotu, as he brings the word of God to us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Fire, please help me. He's alive again. For the storm's been He's rolled right. away. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive again. I can hear the angels say, Let the whole world rejoice. He's alive, oh, he's alive again, oh, the storm's been rolled away, he's alive again, he's no spell of Jesus be real in your life. Amen. It won't be fantasy. It will be something real and tangible in your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know John said the word we brought unto you. There are, there are, there are things we feel, we've thought, we've wondered. Yes, you know things that have manifested in our life. Real. So shall the word of God be in your life in the name of Jesus. There was a time we used to pray a lot for my children. You know, let them know Christ and all that. And at that point, my wife started praying this prayer. God, let the gospel of Jesus be real in my children's life. And it's a very serious prayer. You know why? Because if they look at me as their father, I don't know, I don't know, yeah? I, they know I love them, but even the best of us, the very best of us, we still fall short. So the gospel of Jesus will be real in your life. Amen. It will be something tangible in your life. Amen. The evidence of it will be strong in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, behold your people. Yes. Behold your people. It's a special season. And it's an assignment I've taken very seriously. But Lord, this hour it can only be by your spirit. Speak to your people, oh Lord. Feed them by yourself. That specific thing you want them to hear. That specific issue you want to resolve. Let it come to surface. And let your spirit attend to it. In the name of Jesus. That at the end of the day, Lord, we will return all the glory unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, choir. Thank you very much. Please, let's be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor, thank you for the opportunity. Pastor Victor, Pastor Fritz, I can't take you for granted. We celebrate the grace and the seal for service in your life and the anointing. Amen. And the Lord will continue to enlarge your ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Fritz, thank you very much. Yeah, I pray for you a lot, both of you. Believe me, believe me. I pray for you a lot, a lot. Uh, I keep that, so I'll be with you. So thank you, my wife, for supporting me all along and standing right by me, managing my shortcoming. I have my young and grown children here. Yeah, 
guys, thank you very much for, for, for being where you are. Happy Resurrection Sunday to all of us. It's nice to see everybody looking vibrant, brilliant, and sharp, and, and uh, well, 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 well dressed and beautiful. I celebrate the grace of God over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't worry. The Lord is still what? On the throne. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, relax. I, 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 you have a passion for the kingdom of God. Don't worry. What do I say? Don't worry. God is on the throne. You remember? This feeling is not new to us. It's not new. Remember what uh, David said, Psalm 73. Yeah, he said, Surely God is good to Israel and they that are a cleaner. He said, As for me, my feet almost slipped. I almost stumbled when I bear the prosperity of the wicked. He said, They are thriving. They are everywhere, blossoming. He said, But when I remember their end, yeah. If you read Ezekiel chapter 8, it will tell you people that are entrusted with the temple. He said, and the Lord took me and I saw them. They will worship in the day and the night. They will be there in their regalia, worshiping the sun. So there's nothing happening that is what? That is new. But God is the God. I tell you, I, I used to pray in panic all over the place. Believe me or not, nothing be except what? It be from God. I'm quoting the Bible for you. Except the Lord allowed it. Nothing. Uh -huh. And if we allow it, he allowed it for what? For a purpose. Yes. Sir. yes. yes sir. Uh, he said, I've raised fire out so that what? Uh -huh. My glory can be shown through him. So that I can destroy him. We have the statistics of the churches in the UK that are for sale. Loads and loads of them. Is Christianity dying in this country? Maybe. Yeah, but believe me. The agenda of God will still work. It will still stand. Yes. yes sir. Let's say we say we are praying now. God, uh, Jesus might not must not be killed. He must not go, be killed. He must not be slain. Will God answer that prayer? No. Why? Because He said He's from the foundation of the heart. He's been what? He's been slain. He's been slain. Mm. Yes. He's been slain. I used to panic. I see them all over, everywhere. But. The will of God will see what? He will stand. Whether they like it or not. At the right time, in the right season, in according to his will, he will see what? He will still stand. No devil can resist it. Amen. Yes. When his time and season and his influence come, will he use us? Yes, he will use us. Must we be prepared? Yes, we must be prepared. Yes. Do we have roles to play? Absolutely, we have roles to play. But the due time, in the due season, what God will do, he will see what? He will do it. No devil. No devil can resist him. No devil. No demon. When he's ready, he's ready. And let's not be discouraged. Let's not be weary. I was hearing a prayer point with uh, one of our Beloved pastor, some few days ago, believe me, there are remnants in this land, even this land, there are remnants that the Lord has kept for his end time agenda in this country, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. You remember what, when uh, Elijah said, Lord, everybody has bowed their legs to bow. It's only me. He said, well, what do you mean? I got 7,000 more people. There are remnants in this land, whether you like it or not. Except the Lord left us some remnants. We will have been on like, to like Sodom or to like Gomorrah. One of our pastors went to Isle of Sky to, for a retreat. And as he was walking, there was a walk up, prayer walk. A man walked up to him and said, the Holy Spirit told me you are coming. He said, you, you know the Holy Spirit, of course. He told me, you are coming, and you people have a special assignment. That, but there's nobody enough in your heart for the land. Mm. You are economic immigrants, but you are a spiritual immigrant, first of all. <laughs> yeah, forget all this thing you are chasing about. He said, there are remnants in this land. Some of them are tired and weary. We will pray for them together. 
He said some of them are tired and weary. They are discouraged and frustrated by this kind of things we are seeing around them. He said, but believe me or not, they are all they are remnant. God has prepared them for the season of his revival. Amen. Yes, they are remnant all over every corner of this country. Believe it or not. Holy Spirit filled. Yeah. If it's, if God cannot overlook the heritage of this nation and allow it to fall to pieces. Do you understand me? Yeah. Yes. 16th, 17th century in Glasgow, they will hold the revival of 100,000 people in Glasgow. This is Glasgow. Yes. Not, uh, not, I'm not talking of uh, 1940. So, so there's seed. Pastor was explaining the place of role of seed to us. There are seeds that have been sown in this country, in this nation. So the revival will come. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. I say to you, before, let me move on to Easter message. But I say to you, no, it doesn't matter what brings you to this country. And it's fine. But as a born again Christian, you have a spiritual assignment. Yes, you have a spiritual assignment. You must start from your marketplace. We call it marketplace evangelism. You must be a role model. You must be an example. You must understand you represent more than yourself. Uh, and we were saying, we had a prayer session a week or two, a week ago, and we were saying, if all you pray for is God, give me bread, bread, bread. Uh, you are reversing your Lord's prayer. If you give us our daily bread, it came way down the line. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's led, yes, yeah. yeah, it came way down the line. You can pray for it. I don't pray for bread and butter. I don't pray for it. Uh, but, but, but if you pray for it, that's fine. But it must be way down your list. The more important thing, the will of God, his kingdom. Yes. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't wear crosses, but uh, I see pastor wear one. And the, the, the Jesus is not on it, is it? Uh-huh. Jesus is no longer on the cross. He came down, yes. So if you are going to wear a cross and you are going to buy a cross, buy the one that uh, Jesus is not on it, like, like the one pastor has. <laughs> it's important, <laughs> it's, it's important. You know why? Because Jesus is what? He's no longer on the cross. Uh, he's no longer on the cross, yes. It's no longer at the cross. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 For the... <clears throat> I might be all over the place. Bear with me. But uh, uh, normally I'm organized, so it should still flow. On the resurrection message, I want to tell you about an empty cross, an empty tomb, and empty grave clothes. Matthew 20, 18 to 19. Matthew 20, 18 to 19. Uh, bro, I keep me right on timing, please. And I have like 10 minutes. So, okay. Is it counting down now? It's counting down. So I've got 21 more minutes. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Behold, Matthew 20, 18 to 19. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priest and to the scribe. And they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentile to mock and scourge and crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. We've spoken about that. It's an established wish of God that no matter what, the devil cannot shift. You just have to go to the cross. He have to. Uh, no matter what. And the devil could not shift it. He could not. He could not. He could have, number one, he couldn't fully comprehend the impact. You understand that? Because the Bible said, I did known. <laughs> they would not I have not crucified the king of glory. So the way, that's the way it works. Okay. And we spoke about his death already. Yeah. And, you know, on the third hour, he gave up the ghost. And when the Sabbath was coming, they want to go and break their legs, remember? Because so they can bring them down. They don't want them on the cross into the Sabbath, okay? But when they got to Jesus, he was already dead because he said he's finished. So 
fulfilling the Bible that none of his bones will, will be broken. So they brought him down. And uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, remember Nicodemus, they took him and washed him and, and buried him and gave him a, a befitting burial. So the cross itself is empty and it signifies the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's on the cross. Uh, that he said was, it is finished. It concludes the perfect work of our salvation. Very perfect. It is complete. Complete. Seed. Delivered. So it's, that's why people sometimes say Christianity is something that is already what? Already done. We are Lord just tapping into it. You know, we're tapping into it. We're tapping into it. So it's like a main truck line that has been laid. And then we are all not just tapping into it. Tapping. So the cross is empty. But the cross is powerful, extremely powerful. It symbolizes the love of God for us, the sacrifice that Jesus did, and the work that he has came to achieve. Purpose, purpose that he has come to achieve. So because of that, we can be bold in certain aspects. We can walk into certain promises of God. Hallelujah. And, and, and what blew my mind is the simplicity of the gospel. The simplicity of the gospel. Paul referred to it in 1 Corinthians 1.18. The gospel is said, believe me, is simple. It's, it's not difficult. It's simple. I used to want to articulate it, you know, color it, you know, speak intelligently and smartly and eruditely around it. But the fundamental thing is that the gospel of Jesus is what? It's simple. It's simple. All have seen and what? Fall short of the glory of God. Yes. Men have drifted away. To reconcile man to himself, Jesus, God did what? He sent his son. Yes. To bear our sin and die for us on the cross of Calvary. And he died and he did what? He rose on the third day. That whoever will believe on him, yeah, will come unto God. Yes. It's, it's that simple. So if you believe him with your heart, you confess him with your mouth, you will be saved, you and your household. You believe that God sent him to die for you, that he did that and rose again, that he's right now at the right hand with the Father interceding for you, that his word is coming back again to take those that are his, you know, with him. It's not difficult. It's, not, it's quite straightforward. But it takes the spirit of God to impress it in the heart of man. You remember that. Uh, the Bible says no man can call Jesus a cause except by the spirit of the devil. But he also said in the same verse that no man can call Jesus Lord except what? By the Holy Spirit. Are you with me now? <laughs> yes. So though we have a role, ultimately, the, man, the person to do the job is the spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The tomb is also empty, remember? Yes. I would say Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came. And then, they, what did they see? They saw the tomb empty. The tomb is empty. It's empty. It's empty. It's empty because there's nothing the devil have to tie you back again. Yes, I, I, I tell you, you know, I, I, we need to pray for the Spirit of God to lead us to pray. Now, there's one thing about the people outside that wants to come into the fold, that this, all these things are discouraging. But there are those of us already in the fold. There's a spirit of condemnation and unworthiness of the grace of God in the Christendom. Are you with me? Yes, yes. Uh, you wobble, you stumble, you revow, you say you won't again, you are back to it again. Is it temper? I won't lose my temper again. You try and try, but then you lose it. One or two of our past that should have been gone keep holding us down. So it's a prevalent issue. That spirit of condemnation, of... Uh, Accusation of unworthiness of so, so so you can walk in the full liberty that Christ has purchased for you. 
So every spirit of condemnation, the Lord will lift it away. Yes, yes, yes. The tongue is empty. Yes, Christ has taken away all your guilt, all your shame, all your condemnation. It doesn't matter what you've done. And, and, and we can be guilty in, in, in the Christendom as well. We have a righteousness attitude. You know, we have a self-holiness attitude. If we see one or two of us struggling, rather than coming around, supporting them, we condemn and moan and mock. And we drive ourselves to a point that they would rather hide than come out and look, I'm struggling in this area. It is not right. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Yeah, it's not right. There was a relationship me and my wife have to cut away completely sometimes ago, you know. We have one or two positions some people are taking. And this young man will come around. He loved me, he loved my wife. But look, I want us to take this course of action. No, we're not cut out like that. Doesn't matter who is right or wrong in this level now. Let's come together and address the issue. That's the important thing. That's the important thing. That's the important thing. Of course, if you are my brother, a Christian brother, you do one or two things, I might be disappointed, okay? But it doesn't mean the end of, of, of what we can restore or what we can make happen. Uh, and the funniest thing I notice is that some of them hair in ways that are visible. And then we want to ask for their head. And why many of us head in ways that are not visible. And we know within ourselves that, yeah, Christ died for all of us. If God has helped you in place of some righteousness, glory be to his name and glory be to the spirit of God helping you. Well, if I'm weak or still finding my footing, well, don't condemn me. Yeah, it's don't condemn me. The same God that helped you will help me. Uh, uh, so, so I'm just generalizing it. You, you get the way I'm going. Yeah. So, so it's important we we'll pray for ourselves. Uh, and even if you are strong, you are strong. What for a purpose? Yeah. So yeah, I know we have strong men among us. There is no doubt. Remember what Jesus said to Peter. Eh, Satan desire to have you, but I pray for you that your strength will not fail. He said, but when you are strengthened, do what? Strengthen your brethren. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. See, Moses model deliverers very well in the Bible. Very well. Very well. Recently, I have to commit to something that... Uh, would be significant and would be like a five years journey. So, so I was very uncomfortable with it. Normally, my wife supports me every day in some of these dimensions, but she was also worried. So when she's worried, you can realize that it's just a genuine way to be concerned about it. So, so I was murmuring. So, but suddenly, she, she's more spiritual than me. She turned around faster than me. <laughs> and said, look, I think we should just commit to this thing. So that night I was praying, and the Lord told me, look, I send you to be a deliverer for some people. You are moaning and complaining. Uh, I'll be reading your Bible and say, yes, you can moan and complain, but if people have sent you to deliver, you must what? You must deliver them. I've appointed you for a season, for a purpose, for a reason. I've raised you up. I've overcome some certain things for you because of certain things. Are you with me? Everybody that Lord have raised you up to deliver, you will deliver them. Uh, you will not disappoint God. Every destiny that Lord has empowered you to raise, to assist, to enhance, the grace to do it, the Lord will give it unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the grave clothes are empty as well. You remember? The grave clothes are empty and you know what grave clothes are? Yeah, it's done, finished. They wrap it up and all that. Every other thing that can be, nothing is expected from that anymore, yeah? Nothing is expected from that anymore. Yeah, you, you, we can see that in, the, in uh, Lazarus. But four days he was dead and stinking. All of gone, all of gone. But what? 
the resurrection and the life came into the situation. Yeah. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You no situation is hopeless for you. Uh, no situation is hopeless for you. The resurrection and the life will step in. His mercy will prevail. And things will be turned around. In the name of Jesus. I felt I should dwell on that for a little bit more. Remember what the Bible said about the lawful captive. You know what a lawful captive is? Rightly. Rightly. You are in their trap. You fall in rightly. By, you, so, so you deserve the punishment. You are a lawful captive. But the Bible said, even despite that, by his mercy, uh-huh. The evil lawful captive shall be what? Shall be delivered in the name of Jesus. Oh, Mali, Tatali, Karush, Mantele, Badala, Leke, Re, De, 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 De. Oh, Father. Every captivity, we put an end to it now. Now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Now, you know the funny thing, the linen around his head was neatly folded, orderly, and put in one place. Now, now I stand to tell you <clears throat> that you know that the natural state of things is disorder. I hope you know that. I hope you know that. It's not order. Are you aware of that? Yes. The natural state of things is what? Is disorder. Remember in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the heart was without what? Form and void. Yes. So the natural state of things is what? Is disorder. We call it entropy in, in, in science. Yes. So the natural tendency of everything, human being, building, institutions, marriage, everything to die, to just fall down. That's the natural state of it. It's disorder. Yeah. But in many men's eyes, we call something negative entropy. What you now do deliberately, purposely, yeah, to prevent that disorder. Okay? So the spirit of God is an instrument against disorder. Yeah. I know pastors have a strong passion for homes. And we pray heavily for homes. So you must work it. Say it after me. You must work it. You must work it. Uh The natural state of things is for things to fall apart around you. But the grace and the wisdom to work it and work it right, the Lord will give it unto us in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Every spirit of disorder, of confusion, of chaos in your home, in your business, in your career, the Lord will silence them now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that the gospel of Jesus will be manifested every day in your hearts and it will be real and God will give you that grace. And I pray that the, 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 the Order the responsibility that comes with what Christ has done for you and your salvation, the Lord will reveal it unto you and give you the grace to do it in the name of Jesus. Now, let's talk of what kind of Christian should I be? I will appreciate what the Lord has done for me. You know, they say to whom much is given, much is expected. I think that's, these are the lines we should pray. Uh, we are failing God, many of us. Many of us. We are failing God in many ways. We thank God for living in assembly. But in, in some churches, it's all you go in and chaos and confusion and here and there and here and there. Even I, I got a group handed over to me back in Nigeria recently and I, I was trying to conclude that they don't have any spiritual cover. Pastor, that was my conclusion initially. But I now realize that they are estate maintenance officer. In his lowly corner, he has no office in that environment. Sir. He used one portion in the generator room. 
He was their spiritual cover, Pastor. In the dark hours of the night, he will be walking around, praying, covering everybody, sowing seed of prayers, coordinating everything. So, so I was very encouraged. And I started walking in the night myself rather than sleeping because uh, I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was higher than him in the hierarchy. What am I saying? We all have a duty and a role to play. If we leave all the necessary prayer in this church to Pastor uh, Victor and Pastor Faith, we will struggle. Uh, and when we struggle, we will be the bearer of the, of the struggle. So we must be good ambassadors. First Kings chapter 6, verse 1. Now, to be good ambassador, I'm beginning to tie it up around the very soon. We can't give what we don't have. Exactly. I think we pray about that uh, last week. We cannot give what we don't have. First Kings chapter 6, verse 1, and I'll read verse 7. And it came to pass in the 418 year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, the fourth year of Solomon reigned over Israel in the month Siv, which is second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither armor, nor axe, nor any tool of iron had in the house while it was in building. Do, do you understand that Bible verse? Do you understand that Bible verse? We have to build a temple of the Lord. But all the cutting, all the shaping, all the filing, all the smoothing, all the rounding, all the dimensioning were done elsewhere. So that there will be quietness and peace in the house of the Lord when it's been built. So they just broke the stone already and just place it in place. Lord, make me a noiseless stone. That's a prayer. Let's pray for a minute. Every smoothing, every rounding, every shaping, every filing, whatever needs to be changed, whatever needs to be dropped, every excesses, every wrinkle, every stain, every blemish, any way, any area, Lord. File me, shape me, smooth me into a noiseless stone so that I fit right into your temple in the right place doing the right thing that you've commissioned me to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me in the name of Jesus. Oh, cleanse me, purge me, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we honor you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I, was, I pray for revival a lot in this nation, and I'm beginning to see signs that that revival will come. And, and I've always liked to build models from the Bible. You know, when, you remember, uh, yeah, look at the Israelis, Israelite captivity, for instance. It was, it was ordained. Remember, there was murmuring, there was issues, and they will be taken to captivity. But when the time of their restoration came, even a pagan king, Cyrus, was the one that decreed. Yes. Said, okay, you guys can go back to your land and do whatever you need to do. So the first set of people that came were led by Serubabel and Joshua the high priest. They came. Yeah? And they came and started to rebuild the temple of God. They started. They had issues, they had obstacles, I, I know that, but they were able to build it. And the word of the Lord came on to Serubabel. And then he built it. His hand that started it, completed it. And then Ezra came and restored worship. Remember? Worship is important. Extremely. So they, he restored worship. And then Nehemiah came and did what? He built the gate of Jerusalem that beautified it completing their restoration. So there's a sequence. There's a pattern. There's a, uh, there's a purpose. There's a place. There's a person. 
So the purpose for God bringing you into this land, you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray for the church of God, generally, and for redeemed Christian church of God specifically. It's an end time church. And the gate of hell is against it. It's against the church. That's, that's certain. But the Bible says the gate of hell will not prevail against it. Lord, restore your church. The exalted position you've created for your church. Help us to occupy it in the name of Jesus. I don't know how you will pray that prayer, but I hope you understand my prayer. The Bible says at the end time, the house of the Lord shall be exalted. And all nations will run into it. Lord, beautify your church. Beautify your church. Cover your church in glory and honor. In the name of Jesus. Let the gate of hell not prevail against it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we honor you. We adore you. We give you all glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm beginning to round up. I'm almost there. I want us to pray for our children. I have a deep passion for, for, for our children. I want us to pray for our children. I want us to pray for ourselves. <sighs> David, Eli, I can go on. That people that their children become a source of affliction for them. You know, I can. There are a number of children. Me and my wife are praying for now. Recently, there was a case. She cried. I couldn't sleep for days. So we must pray for our children. It's also very important. Pastor, I was going to say, maybe we get uh, uh, a covenant specifically for children. Maybe we give pastor back that feedback and then we can develop something specifically for children. Uh, a covenant. There are a whole lot of covenants in the Bible around our children. So, so let me give... Uh, Pastor, that feedback. We can develop one for the children. Yeah. So I want us to pray for our children. I want us to pray for our children. We will not be a stumbling block for our children. Uh, some of us are too rigid. We are too rigid. We are too narrow-minded. Yes. We bring them here. We are raising them here. But we are too narrow-minded. I was guilty of it. Uh, uh, you can raise your children here yeah, the way your daddy raised you in the village. Do you, do you know that? Uh -huh. You won't give them... There will be place of discipline and place of teaching them. But more importantly, it will be by example that you live. Uh -huh. Is that clear? Uh -huh. There are a lot of influence around them. You will shield them, you will protect them. But ultimately, ultimately, uh -huh. is the example you give them. Do you understand me? Uh -huh. I, give, I was reading of somebody that his job was as a fake currency detector. Okay? So somebody came to interview him and said, you must have studied a lot of fake currency. He said, no, I don't, I've never even studied a single fake currency. I just studied the original. I know it so well that if you big me a counterfeit, easily I can what? I can pick it out. Do you get that? Uh -huh. He said, no, uh, my job is not to study counterfeit so that I can recognize counterfeit. I just do what? Study the original. Study it so well, so deeply, I know it so deeply that any fake you now bring, I can recognize it. So we must model Christ for our children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I want us to start praying first. God help me to nurture and raise my children according to your will and your purpose. I want to hear you pray. Please pray. You are a custodian of destiny of these children. Uh, do you understand that? Uh, you are their helper. You are to shape them, mold them, push them into their destiny. 
you will not fail God in that area in the name of Jesus. My children will not be a source of affliction for me. They will not be a source of pain, a source of mourning or sorrow or, or anguish for me in the name of Jesus. Male kale padalaba koso tetebeye manteregege zelebaya. Father, we, 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 we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Uh, you are not praying that prayer well. Mm. Somebody came sometimes ago to see me and my wife, and he told us that the devil used my younger brother to afflict my father. Oh, did the man have a stroke? He told me. He told us. He said he used my younger brother to torment our family. So much torment. And you know the way it works. This boy was the Baba's favorite. He said, he, my, my, my wife remembered. He told us that our prayer, our everything was right. Everything was right. Everything was right. And the devil came after this boy. And he used him to torment and destroy my father. He told us, <laughs> so, so, so these are real thread that the devil uses, but that will not be your own portion. That will not be your own testimony. So I want you to lift up your voice again and pray, Lord, I cover my children with the blood of Jesus. My children will not be source of pain, source of affliction, source of sorrow, source of torment for me in the name of Jesus. My children will do well. They will do well. They will do well. They will serve you. They will know you. They will blossom in the name of Jesus. My children will fulfill their purpose. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. If your children is around you, any one of them, go to them, please, if you don't mind. Hold them for one minute or so. Yes, hold them for one minute. If they are not old any children, any child, yeah, please, mother, father, uh, let's do this. It's a spiritual exercise. Uh, if your children is around, if, hold their hand. Le paraka motole bobo shake le prekete lento to 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 ma crepe le pete le be mara ka 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 le pe 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 re pe pe re 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 la ta 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 ma re ke ke le be be the lord told me i can pray for your children like you will pray for them that's why this exercise so pray for them yourself from your heart by your heart. pray for them pray for them pray for them decree and declare Put on every negative thing. Be the sheet of fire around them. Declare them for God. Anoint them for God. Hey, Father, we thank you. <laughs> The seal of the law will perform it. Every declaration will turn to testimony. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Every demon that roamed this land, that torment children, we shield our children away from it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we honor you. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, per venture, there's any parent here or anybody you know, you know, I've talked about praying for ourselves that might be struggling with their children. This is a time to pray for them. There's a restoration that comes with God. And only God can make it happen. You remember the prodigal son? He said, I will arise and I will go on to my father. So I want us to pray. Any, if you know any child that is in that position, mention their name. 
pray for them. If you don't, let's pray generally for our children. Lord, per venture, we have any child that I have been struggling, falling into the trap of the devil. Lord, by your power, deliver them in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. That the King of glory, per venture, there's any child, any child that might have fallen under the hand, the oppression oppressive hand of the devil that he deliver them deliver them in the name of Jesus no matter how far gone they are Lord restore them Lord restore them in the name of Jesus by strength of arm the Lord deliver Israel from the house of Egypt Lord by strength of arm restore oh Lord restore oh Lord in the name of Jesus oh Daddy will honor you. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I have two specific prayers for specific people. The Lord told me to tell someone, just stay quiet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Keep calm. Just stay quiet. Oh, what do you think? Say something. Just stay quiet. You cannot self-justify yourself. I don't know what you are into. I don't know what it is. But the Bible said, keep quiet. The Bible said what? Sorry, the Holy Spirit said what? Keep quiet. It won't be by what you said. Mm -hmm. you cannot. You cannot self-justify yourself. Keep quiet. The Holy Spirit said what? Keep quiet. He said, I will speak for you in their heart. Yeah. Mm. So it won't just self justify. I'm marking my case. I'm presenting my case. And it, that, it won't be that way. The way it will be will be that I will speak to them in their heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the person that is involved. The Lord have revealed that to you. The second specific and the last one I have is that don't tell me to tell somebody you have to work on your reputation it's very important you have to do what on your reputation it's very important you can determine what you get do you understand that uh -huh. you won't live your life to please people but it's important what people think of you it's important rightly rightly uh -huh. you remember we studied dockers today eh? Uh -huh. When she, my teacher was telling me, eh, they said, look, this one cannot die. Oh, you have to restore him. I remember that centurion. When he sent to Jesus, said, look, my servant is sick. Come and heal him. What did they say to him? They said, it's worthy that you go to him. Because he loved our nation and he's built a synagogue for us. And as they were going, what did the centurion do? He sent to Jesus. Now, why are you coming to me? I'm a man of authority like yourself. Does that not prove his reputation right? He did. He did. Am I communicating to you? Uh, I'm not saying live your life to please people. But see, people will help you through people. Whether you like it or not. Uh -huh. uh, it will help you through people. It will lay it in people's heart and purpose to help you, to support you. And then you can't realize a destiny without a destiny ever. It's not possible. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, to go to the cross, he raised up people that crucify him, is it not? Uh, if there are nobody to crucify him, he will not be able to fulfill his destiny. So what people think of you my matters in some places. And the Lord himself will build a good reputation for you and go ahead of you and prepare people to help you. Every tongue wagging, condemning you, judging you, saying you are unworthy, the Lord will condemn them, the Lord will silence them in the name of Jesus. Concerning your epa is the only the voice of God that they will have. Yes, yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We thank you for what you've done for us on the cross of Calvary. We are bold, confident, able to walk forward, face tomorrow because of what you've done for us. Daddy, we are eternally grateful. 
the resurrection and the life we are grateful that the Lord renew our love for you shape us and mold us according to your will give us grace to serve you in holiness and in truth that will be worthy ambassador of the things you've done for us in the name of Jesus that at the end of it Lord King of glory we will make heaven we will not fall by the wayside in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen, Amen.